For those who are interested in endurance cycling or in people riding across Australia will probably be aware of the Indo-Pacific Wheel Race. And this was a race that, where it attracted some very serious competitors worldwide. And one of those competitors was Mike Hall. But unfortunately during the race, whilst travelling towards Canberra on the Monaro Highway, Mike Hall was hit by a car and died on the scene of the crime. there was a investigation into that and the coroner's report has just been released. Now these are just my opinions and my comments. I haven't been involved with the investigation and I haven't been hands on or been to the scene of the crime. I'm just looking at the coroner's report, the comments and basically interpreting my thoughts which are related to that report. The report mostly focused on the condition of the road of that particular point in the highway and visibility from what I could see from reading the actual report. Now it basically said that there was a narrowing of the road there because it was an intersection, I believe Williamson Road was the road and at that point there was a refuge and there was also some reflectors that were on the side of the road to identify to drivers that there was a refuge there and the investigator who was involved in doing this investigation inferred that the tail lights of the bicycle may have been confused with these reflectors and this is why the driver did not identify the cyclist on the road whilst driving along the road. The other point was that they basically analysed the visibility of the cyclist and whether the reflector built into his light was adequate if the clothing did actually have reflectors and if the reflectors actually were effective. They did reference other photography that they analysed but said that this could not be taken as variable visibility to that position because these other pictures could have used different type of lighting which may have made the, the reflective material work better. Now in my view with reflective material it doesn't have so much to do with the lighting, it's more about the angle. If the angle is closer to the vision point, then the reflected light is maximised. Now, with most car headlights, when you have a reflective material like a sign or whatever, the reflective material usually works very effectively. I've tried this with my own bicycle, I put reflective tape on my own bicycle, so if he had reflected material on his clothing, which was indicated in footage of his clothes he was wearing just earlier before the accident, then he would have been very visible. The other item that was questionable from the report was the actual light. Was the light bright enough? Did it actually shine? It was powered by a dynamo and it actually had a built-in reflector and if this was adequate enough for the conditions. There was some criticism of the type of lighting he had on his bicycle. Under Australian law, the criteria for rear lights is that they need to be seen from a 200 metre distance, and that is the criteria for a legal light. Now, I don't know why this wasn't mentioned in the report. They basically went on about, could the light be seen or, was it, or should it have been flashing or not flashing, but they didn't mention that the actual light did meet the criteria of the law. Whether or not a flashing light versus a solar light would have made any difference and the driver would have seen him is completely hypothetical. And why the, the coroner went down this path is beyond me because you cannot even insinuate that one would have been better than the other because you haven't actually carried out any tests. You haven't actually done tests 
on visibility at location with the reflectors that were nearby, which were referenced in the report, which they said could have been confused with the light on Mike's bike. They haven't done any control tests regarding flashing versus still. Now, unless you do this and actually check the visibility, you can't actually make, it, make a conclusion from science or from doing tests that a flashing light would be better than a solar light. Yet, the coroner recommended that the law should look at mandating in law flashing and not a solid light. Regardless of all this, the driver collided with the bicycle. Now, it seems to me that the report was more focused on whether the driver could actually see Mike riding down the road. There was a lot of, there was a significant part of that coroner's report that talked about visibility. Now, I actually think this is completely irrelevant because his bicycle did meet legal requirements. It did actually have a reflector. And even if you, even if you ignored the fact it had a reflector, it had a light that was, was visible at 200 meters. So yes, we may even argue the reflector may have been too small or not small, but he was visible on the highway. And this is where I believe that there was unconscious bias coming in. If it was another vehicle, there would have been no questions asked about how good were the tail lights, how good were the reflectors, was the vehicle five years old, was the vehicle 10 years old, did it meet older standards where the reflectors weren't as big and, the, and with the new LED technology, the indicators and the brake lights and everything are brighter. No, none of that would have come into the equation. But because it's a bicycle, the focus was very much on the user of that bicycle to make himself visible. And this is where I see the unconscious bias comes in. Therefore, my conclusion is that the emphasis on the report should have been the law and who hit who. Now under Australian law, or in the law in the ACT at this point in time, you had to keep two meters from a cyclist. The cyclist had legal lighting on the bike, so therefore it met the requirements of visibility for a bicycle, as do the equipment that's on a car for the visibility of seeing a car. Therefore, the driver has no excuse for not identifying the bicycle on the road during the night and allowing two meters for the bicycle to be on the edge of the road. This is the law. Now, if a car has hit a cyclist, therefore he's breached a two meter barrier that is law. So therefore he has broken the law. There's, I, I can't see how you can see that any differently. And in that case, because the driver didn't give the two meters, he should be at fault, not, be, not Mike and having more reflective material or, or how much reflective material is enough or was the reflector adequate enough or was the light bright enough or should it have been flashing? All of these things are completely immaterial. Whether the driver basically confused them with reflectors on the side of the road is completely immaterial because these are hypotheses. They're not, they're not the law. Yes, they may have had some cause and influence due to the location, but the driver still breached the two meter barrier and hit the cyclist. Now, this is, this is my view on these sorts of things and it tends to be this when cyclists are involved in accidents, they say, oh, they didn't see them or whatever, and they run them down and the punishments are extremely light. Even people that have been drunk have had very, very light sentences historically. There even was a documentary done on the 730 report regarding this. So it's not just me that believes this, it's, it's actually been displayed in the media and reported on. Okay, in summary, what do we, what do we take away from this? Firstly, the visibility of Mike was immaterial in the coroner's report as far as I can see it because his bicycle met the requirement of being able to see 
the bicycle from a two meter distance. So the light was bright enough for that. So it met the requirements and this is pretty much in every single law across the country. So first thing, it met the requirements. Two, any reflective material that's on his body, there is no law for this. It, it's completely optional. And he actually did have some reflective material on there. Unfortunately, the police didn't collect that material and it couldn't be used as evidence. But from my point of view, it's completely irrelevant because whether he had the reflective material on or not, it's basically pointing the finger at the cyclist rather than the driver. Thirdly, on the road, we have we had a narrowing section. All sorts of parts of roads in the metro and roads, we have all these situations, even for vehicles, there's, there's black spots, there's more hazards in one place than another. And because there was an intersection there, drivers need to take care. So all of these factors I see are completely irrelevant. They may have been contributing to the accident, but they are not root cause. The root cause, as I see it, is the driver was not driving to conditions. Whether that was a slow moving vehicle, it could have been a crane, it could have been a motorbike, it could have been anything, it could have been a person walking on the road. Do you just say, oh, it's okay for this guy to hit someone because I confused it with the reflectors, I didn't see him, the pedestrian didn't have enough high vis on, blah, 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 blah. They're, they're just excuses to reduce the percentage of responsibility that should be basically allocated to the driver on this day. Well, that's my thoughts on that. Uh, just leave your comments and what you think down below. I would love to hear what people think out there. Maybe I've got it wrong. Maybe I've got it, other people may have a different view. They may think the coroner did a great job, but as I said prior, I believe that there was some unconscious bias towards cyclists in that report. Thank you for listening. Have a good one. Stay safe out there.